Penguin Random House Audio presents Blitzed by Alexa Martin. Read for you by Kristen C. with Sullivan Jones. Prologue. Four years ago. Maxwell. Beautiful. I normally hate when the guys drag me out to bars. They just aren't my scene. But Gavin is back in town, and I couldn't say no without looking like an asshole, so I gave in. Then I saw her, and my entire outlook changed. I wanted to beeline straight over to her and ask for her name and number, but I couldn't. Talking a little trash on the field, I can do. But even just the thought of walking up to a woman and asking for her number makes my palms sweat. So I did the next best thing. I sat at the bar, knowing she'd at least have to take my order. Maxwell, right? Bryn slides my old-fashioned in front of me. She tucks in the piece of hair that fell from the bun on top of her head and smiles. And that smile? Whew! I almost forgot how to answer her question. Her smile is so bright and genuine. It takes her already beautiful face and transforms it to stunning. Yeah, and you're Bryn. Gavin has told me all about you. Well, he told me about hers and how she's been there for Marley, but he left out the part where she could put any model to shame, even in the sneakers and ripped jeans she's wearing. Don't listen to anything he says, she jokes. Marley drank that tequila of her own accord, and I had nothing to do with it. Well, I haven't heard anything about tequila, but that sounds like a story I need to hear more of, I say, and shock myself. I'm not a small talk kind of guy. Usually, I just order whiskey and find a spot in the corner to occupy until I have fulfilled my time. But for some reason, Bryn has me sitting at the bar, wanting to talk until she has to kick me out. Oh, I might have to keep you around forever for that. Pink instantly colors her cheeks. I mean, I won't keep you forever. That'd be creepy and maybe even illegal. I just have a lot of stories to tell. Not that I'm a gossip. I just like to talk. She squeezes her eyes shut. And fuck if she isn't cute on top of being drop-dead gorgeous. How is it even possible for her to get flustered? Let's pretend that word vomit didn't happen. I'm not sure I could ever forget anything you do. I take a sip of my old fashioned, holding eye contact with Bryn as I do. This woman. I can't put my finger on one thing, but I know in my bones that she's going to turn my world upside down. One. Present day. Bryn. How did I get here? I look around my little bar. When I found this building, I had hoped hers would bring in a moderate crowd and not put me in bankruptcy court. Now it's packed to the brim with reality stars and professional athletes. I never imagined that hiring Marley would get me here, but holy shit am I glad it did. Hey, Bryn. Maxwell Lewis, with his brown eyes that I swear can see to my soul and full lips that always look so soft and sweet— says, sliding into the barstool across from me. Wild night. I smile my brightest lipstickless smile at him and try to not let his overall sexiness cause me to forget how to speak. Yeah, it's a little crowded. Understatement of the century. Tonight is the premiere of Love the Player, the newest reality show on TV following the lives of a handful of Denver Mustangs wags, Wives and girlfriends of sports players, if you've been living under the same rock I was. I assumed the viewing party would be in L.A. or Miami, or someplace super glamorous. But the producers thought since so much of the drama happens at hers, this was the perfect place to host the party. Knowing how much publicity I'm going to get from this show sends a thrill up my spine. Being a female-centered bar is a concept not a ton of people understand. But now it won't need to be explained. It will be seen nationwide. Fucking amazing. I never thought I'd love Aviana and her flair for the dramatic so much. I've practically been floating in my vans all day long. When photographers from a major magazine came to take behind-the-scenes photos and started snapping shots of the bar I spent blood, sweat, tears, and my entire life savings on, I almost wept. 
And now, as the cherry on top of the already decadent Sunday that's becoming my life, I get to talk to Maxwell Lewis, defensive back extraordinaire, whom I've been crushing on since he walked into hers all those years ago, despite the fact that getting him to talk in a group setting is like pulling teeth. If you know me, you know I don't do boyfriends, and I most certainly do not do crushes. I'm too old and jaded to act like a 12-year-old girl anymore. But there's always an exception to the rule, and Maxwell is my four years and counting exception. Plus, I'm always listening to my friends and their stories with entirely too much information. Now I can't look at Maxwell without thinking he probably really knows how to lay down the D. I'm also totally on board for a friends with benefits situation, something I assume a professional athlete is very familiar with. How'd you get talked into coming to this tonight? I ask doing my best flirty eyes and trying to squeeze together my barely there cleavage. You don't seem like the typical reality show fan. Ever since our first encounter, whenever he comes to hers, I try my hardest to get him to flirt with me. And I think maybe in his quiet Maxwell style, him sitting at the bar is him flirting. He watches me through thick, dark lashes that I know women pay for, and his throaty chuckle, which I've come to the conclusion is so raspy because he never does it, washes over me. I'm not, but I promised Crosby I'd swing by. He wanted this to be perfect for Aviana and thought a big showing of his teammates would help out. That's nice of you. I pull out the lowball glasses I bought just for this event. Being around the Lady Mustangs without all the extras of tonight can be draining. I feel like Crosby might owe you one. I place an old-fashioned he didn't order in front of him. I know it's not exactly playing it coy, memorizing his drink order and all, but I'm not ashamed to let him know I see him, and I'm interested. Well, if I get to spend the night talking to you, I think I'll owe him, he says, his light brown eyes never leaving mine. My stomach does backflips like I climbed onto a roller coaster and just went spiraling toward the ground. In a room filled with women who have literally been cover girls, Maxwell's attention is on me. And even more than that, he's not the kind of guy who says things he doesn't mean. In all the years I've known him, he's never been this forward. I don't know what changed, but I'm not mad at it. Maybe a friends with benefits situation is actually in the cards. My stomach muscles tense in anticipation. So I obviously have to see this through tonight? but maybe I start. But the shrill sound of his phone cuts me off. He cringes. Shit, I meant to put this on silent. Sorry. He apologizes. He grabs his phone from his pocket, hitting answer before even looking at the screen. Hello? He greets, a goofy smile aimed my way. Then it's gone, and the happy-go-lucky, painfully shy man I've come to know disappears right along with it his shoulders square like he's preparing for a fight, and shudders fall across his kind eyes. What? He growls, his grip so tight on his phone that his knuckles go white. No, he says after a long pause. His eyes glaze over as he stares right through me. I know I should walk away, let him have this moment without a witness, but my feet are frozen in place as a ripple of unease flows through my veins. Even my eyes are glued to him, focusing on the twitching of his jaw and grinding of his teeth. Don't you fucking dare. He whispers it into his phone so quietly that if I wasn't staring at his mouth so intently, I would have never known what he said. Then, without any warning, he leaps out of his seat, his phone flying through the air so close to my head that it blows the strand of hair in my face out of my eyes. The glass screen explodes in time with the top-shelf tequila it hit. Then, before I can react, his whiskey and my brand new glass sails past me, hitting my shelves with the power of a bowling ball and, unfortunately for me, getting a strike. Bottles shatter around me. The bar that I prided myself on for so many years crumbling to the floor in a mess of dangerous shards doused in amber and clear liquids. Blood roars between my ears. Shock prevents me from lashing out the way I always assumed I would if something so unbelievable happened in my beloved hers. I turn wide eyes to Max, hoping that at least a look of remorse would be written across his face. But when I see him, 
There's nothing except the blind rage of a man who only moments prior I was preparing to ask to go home with me. I opened my mouth to say something, 